Hello everyone and welcome to another video from our channel, Who Died Today America? In this video we will be bringing you a list of famous celebrities who have passed away today, June 30th, and in the last few days. Additionally, we have some tributes planned for the second part of the video so please stay tuned. Before we proceed we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. Number 12, Lowell P. Weicker Jr., the indomitable liberal Republican who stood against his party's President Richard M. Nixon during the infamous Watergate scandal and later served as an independent governor of Connecticut, passed away at the age of 92 on June 28, 2023. Weicker died in a hospital in Middletown, Connecticut, leaving behind a legacy defined by political independence and staunch conviction. Born in Paris on May 16, 1931, Weika began his journey in politics as a lesser-known junior senator from Connecticut in 1973, but soon catapulted to national prominence when he served on the Senate's Select Committee investigating the Watergate scandal. His robust critique of Nixon, a fellow Republican, marked him as a figure of both admiration and controversy. Throughout his career, Weicker maintained a dedication to challenging authority, even when it came from within his own party ranks. He served in the Senate from 1971 to 1989, where he stood as a firm detractor of Senator Jesse Helms of North Carolina's push towards a socially conservative agenda, viewing the rise of the Christian right within the Republican Party as a detriment to its future. After losing his Senate seat to Joseph I. Lieberman, Weicker parted ways with traditional two-party politics, forming a Connecticut party. As the governor of Connecticut, he held steadfast to his independent principles, notably implementing an income tax during a national recession in 1991, an unprecedented move in the state's policy. Beyond his political endeavors, Weicker was a lover of opera and an author, having penned his autobiography, Maverick, A Life in Politics. From 2001 to 2011, he served as the founding president of Trust for America's Health, a non-profit organization focused on disease prevention. He is survived by his wife, Claudia Weicker, sons Scott, Gray, Brian, Trey, and Sonny, stepsons Mason and Andrew Ingram, 12 grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Lowell P. Weicker Jr.'s enduring legacy as a political maverick and a relentless advocate for independent politics sets him apart in American history. His courage to confront his own party during the Watergate scandal and his unwavering commitment to his principles underscore the essence of his remarkable political career. Number 11. Catalina Maria del Sagrado Corazon Fernandez, known popularly as Talina Fernandez, passed away on June 28, 2023, in Mexico at the age of 78 due to complications from leukemia. A cherished figure in Mexican broadcasting, Fernandez's distinctive hosting style, particularly on the Televisa network, earned her widespread recognition and the endearing title of the Lady of Good Speech. Born on August 2, 1944 in Mexico City, Fernandez began her career in radio and television broadcasting, quickly gaining a reputation for her unique voice and eloquent speech. Fernandez's impressive career included covering the tragic death of Luis Donaldo Colosio, the Institutional Revolutionary Party's presidential candidate, in March 1994 on the late renowned Mexican journalist Jacobo Zabludovsky's news program. Fernandez continued to make her mark in the ever-evolving media landscape until her final days. As recently as October 2022, she was featured on the show MasterChef Celebrity, demonstrating her timeless appeal. Further showcasing her adaptability, she maintained an active YouTube channel where she shared personal anecdotes and conducted interviews, engaging her audience in a new digital format. Her son, Jorge Coco Levy, shared that in her last moments, Fernandez was surrounded by loved ones, reflecting the familial love and warmth that were always present in her life. Her death sparked an outpouring of condolences, especially from her longtime colleagues at Televisa. 
Talina Fernandez leaves an enduring legacy as a trailblazing female broadcaster in Mexico's television industry. Her remarkable career, marked by her elegant speech and adaptability to changing media trends, cements her position as a stalwart in the annals of Mexican broadcasting history. Her impact on the industry and her audiences will be remembered and cherished for generations to come. Number 10, Max Thompson, former Liverpool defender and the club's youngest ever player, passed away on June 27, 2023, at the age of 66. Thompson's journey with the club began when he joined as an apprentice and was later awarded a professional contract in 1973. His debut at just 17 came in the 1973-74 to 74 season against Tottenham Hotspur during Bill Shankly's final campaign as manager. This significant achievement marked him as Liverpool's youngest ever player, an impressive record that remained unbroken for 36 years. Following his time at Liverpool, Thompson had memorable stints with Blackpool, Swansea City and Bournemouth. He also represented American teams such as Dallas Tornado, Seattle Sounders and Baltimore Blast. After retiring from professional football, Thompson transitioned into physiotherapy, lending his expertise to both Liverpool and Southport. Liverpool FC expressed their deep sorrow at Thompson's passing, acknowledging his contribution to the club both as an ambitious young player and as a seasoned professional. His dedication to football, exceptional skills on the pitch, and unwavering service to Liverpool FC have etched his name in the annals of the club's history. Max Thompson's legacy will continue to inspire future generations and remain alive in the hearts of his fans and fellow players. Number 9, Isabel Lacombe, the notable French novelist and actress, passed away at 68 on June 26, 2023 in Paris after a courageous three-year battle with cancer. Born to a French father and Korean mother in Neuilly-sur-Seine, Lacombe's multifaceted heritage was a major influence in her diverse interests and accomplishments. An expert in Chinese and Korean studies, Lacombe's first brush with fame came through cinema, where her unique Eurasian beauty and skilled performances won widespread recognition. Yet, it was in the realm of literature where Lacombe truly made her indelible mark. Beginning her writing career in the late 1980s, she quickly earned a reputation for weaving engaging narratives that deeply resonated with her readers. Among her myriad works, her novel Hombre par miles hombre, which meticulously traced the life of renowned poet Robert Desnos, stands out as one of her most significant contributions. Despite the diminished commercial success of her later works, Lacamp remained a tenacious advocate for the literary arts. She energetically invested herself in organizing literary festivals and encouraging a love for literature. Bruno Dowsey, her publisher, lauded her fervent writing style, observing that when she penned her stories, it's a telluric vibration that runs through her, transcends her, and burns her. Endowed with an unshakable smile and an infectiously positive demeanor, Lacamp was a cherished figure in both the literary and cinematic worlds. Her life stands as a tribute to her extraordinary contributions to literature and cinema, leaving behind an enduring legacy that will continue to inspire future generations. Isabel Lacamp's work and spirit will continue to illuminate the path for those who dare to dream and create. Number 8. Avtar Leet, the pioneering founder of Sunrise Radio, Britain's first 24-hour independent commercial Asian radio station, passed away at the age of 73 on June 27, 2023. A visionary in the broadcasting world, Lit made significant strides in enhancing the representation of the British Asian community in the United Kingdom. In 1989, Lit launched Sunrise Radio in West London bringing to life the world's first 24-hour independent commercial Asian radio station. His innovative approach and entrepreneurial spirit facilitated Sunrise Radio's rapid expansion, and within a short period, the station was broadcast nationally via satellite television. Lit's unwavering dedication to providing a voice for the British Asian community led to a significant transformation in the landscape of UK broadcasting.
As Surjit Singh Guman MBE, Managing Director of Punjab Radio, eloquently stated, Lit was a broadcasting pioneer who was responsible for putting South Asian radio on the air in London. Lit is survived by his mother, five children and five grandchildren, a testament to his cherished roles as a son, father and grandfather. His legacy as a groundbreaker in electronic British Asian media reverberates strongly, with many attributing the platform he created as a significant source of joy and opportunity for the British Asian community. The impact Avtar Lit made on broadcasting and his steadfast commitment to promoting the voices of the British Asian community will continue to echo in the field and resonate with listeners for years to come. His is a legacy of innovation, representation and community, marking him as a luminary in the realm of broadcasting. Number 7, Scott Pelluer, a remarkable linebacker for Washington State from 1977 to 80 and a notable figure in the National Football League, passed away on June 27, 2023, at the age of 64. A heart attack tragically ended a life that was distinguished by significant achievements and an enduring impact on football. Pelluer's journey in the sport began at Bellevue's Interlake High in 1977. where he made history as the first freshman to start a game for the Cougars. Even a severe hang gliding accident couldn't deter Pelluer, who emerged as a key figure in WSU's defense, demonstrating exceptional resilience and determination. During his senior year, he led WSU in tackles for loss and sacks. The love for the sport was a family affair, as all three of his sons followed his path into college football. Over the span of two decades, Pelluer's coaching career covered both sides of the Apple Cup rivalry. He was a respected voice in WSU radio broadcasts, endearing himself to many with his vibrant personality, passion for the game, and commitment to nurturing young talent. In the face of personal tragedy, Pelluer took on the role of a father figure to his younger brothers after their father's untimely death. His life was characterized by service, leadership, and resilience. Scott Pelluer leaves behind a football legacy deeply woven into Washington State's history, cemented by the contributions of four generations of the Pelluer family to the sport. His legacy will live on, not only on the football field but in the hearts of the many lives he touched. Number 6. Jerry Okorodudu, a renowned figure in the world of boxing and Nigeria's former middleweight champion, passed away at the age of 64 on June 28, 2023, in a Lagos hospital. Affectionately known as Urhobo Lips during his boxing years, Okorodudu had been grappling with serious health issues and was awaiting a leg amputation at the time of his death. Born and raised in Nigeria, Okorodudu quickly ascended the ranks in boxing. His journey to international fame began when he secured a gold medal at the National Sports Festival. Oluyole 79. His talent and unwavering determination saw him take home a bronze medal at the 1982 Commonwealth Games in Brisbane, Australia. Despite a controversial disqualification at the quarterfinals of the 1984 Olympic Games, Okorodudu's passion for boxing remained unquenchable. Over his professional career from 1986 to 1992, Okorodudu contested in 40 professional bouts and had 83 amateur fights, leaving a profound mark on boxing history. His dedication to the sport and his unwavering spirit of competition paved the way for many young Nigerian athletes, inspiring them to pursue their sporting dreams. Jerry Okorodudu's passing leaves a significant void in Nigerian sports, but his legacy lives on. His life, characterized by commitment, bravery, and resilience, will continue to inspire and guide future generations of athletes. Number 5, Matt Rendell, an iconic figure in the world of Australian football, tragically passed away at the age of 64 on June 26, 2023, following a heart attack. His family confirmed his passing. acknowledging the ceaseless efforts of the first responders and the staff at the Victorian Heart Hospital in a heartfelt statement. Rendell was born into the Australian football scene and made significant contributions during his illustrious VFL-AFL career that spanned 12 seasons. 
He played 177 games for Fitzroy in Brisbane, with his exceptional prowess earning him the Fitzroy Best and Fairest Awards in 1982 and 83, along with All-Australian selection in 1983 and 1987. Rendell captained Fitzroy from 1987 to 1989, marking a significant period in the club's history. Following his retirement, Rendell transitioned from player to influencer, first as an assistant coach at Melbourne and St Kilda, then as a club recruiter and list manager. He made significant strides at Adelaide, with his selection of future star Patrick Dangerfield in 2010 being considered one of his most successful moves. In addition, Rendell served at Collingwood as a recruiter and part-time ruck coach. Rendell was also a regular commentator during the AFL trade and draft periods, his insights and deep understanding of the game invaluable to audiences. While his sudden passing leaves a significant void in the AFL community, his impactful legacy within Australian football will continue to inspire generations of players and fans alike. Number 4. Renowned Mi'kmaq elder, historian, activist, and author Daniel Paul passed away at the age of 84 on June 27, 2023, after a courageous battle with cancer. A native of Sipeknekatik, Paul devoted his life to chronicling the struggles and resilience of indigenous peoples and was a fervent advocate for their rights. His landmark book, We Were Not the Savages, a detailed account of 300 years of Mi'kmaq history, stands as an indispensable work in both Mi'kmaq and Nova Scotia literature. Beyond his literary pursuits, Paul's advocacy spanned over three decades, during which he campaigned relentlessly for the renaming of landmarks named after Edward Cornwallis, a British governor who infamously offered bounties for Mi'kmaq scalps in the 18th century. Paul's contributions to cultural awareness and understanding of Lanuk history, traditions and community earned him numerous accolades. In 2022, he received a Nova Scotia Human Rights Award, and he was also recognized with the Order of Canada and the Order of Nova Scotia. Paul's passing signifies a substantial loss for the Indigenous community and all those who respected his unwavering commitment to truth and reconciliation. His hope for younger generations to continue teaching and preaching the truth remains a poignant reminder of his lasting legacy. His enduring influence will continue to guide the pursuit of justice and understanding for the indigenous peoples. Number three, venerated winemaker and co-owner of Chateau Lynch Bage, Jean-Michel Cazes, passed away at the age of 88 after a long illness on June 29, 2023. Cazes, with his unyielding spirit and unwavering commitment to fine wine, played a pivotal role in the renaissance of the Bordeaux wine region. Cases blended modern winemaking techniques with savvy international marketing, leaving an indelible mark on the wine world. His Chateau Lynch Bage 1985 vintage was named Wine of the Year by Wine Spectator in 1988, cementing his reputation as a visionary winemaker. In addition to his accomplishments in viticulture, Cases led the French insurance giant AXA's wine business overseeing the acquisition of renowned wine estates. His vision extended beyond the vineyards. He was instrumental in linking Bordeaux's wine country with the city, turning it into a thriving tourism destination. He played a significant role in rejuvenating the hamlet of Bages, establishing the luxurious Cordeillon Bages Hotel and the popular Café Lavinal. Jean-Michel Cazet leaves behind a legacy defined by passion, innovation, and an unwavering commitment to excellence in winemaking. His contributions to the world of wine have transformed the industry and will continue to influence future generations of vintners and wine enthusiasts alike. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Stuart Damon renowned for his enduring role as Dr. Alan Quartermain on the long-running ABC soap opera General Hospital, passed away at the age of 84 on June 29, 2023. 
Damon's career began on the Broadway stage, but he catapulted to fame with his unforgettable portrayal of the Prince in the lavish 1965 CBS musical production of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, alongside Leslie Ann Warren. Damon's career took him across the pond, where he became a familiar face on British television, featuring in shows such as The Champions, The Saint, Steptoe and Son, and The New Avengers. He also graced the West End stage in musicals including Charlie Girl and Man of Magic. In May 1977, Damon joined the cast of General Hospital, and his character, Alan Quatermain, quickly became a central figure entangled in elaborate storylines of love, affairs, and murder attempts. Following six Daytime Emmy nominations, Damon triumphed in 1999, winning the award for his portrayal of his character's battle with painkiller addiction. Aside from his prolific screen career, Damon also had a distinguished theater career, with Broadway credits that included First Impressions and Irma La Douce, and off-Broadway revivals such as The Boys from Syracuse. He also starred in other iconic soap operas, including CBS's As the World Turns and NBC's Days of Our Lives. Damon is survived by his wife, Deirdre Ottawill, and their children, Jennifer and Christopher, his lasting legacy is etched in his 30-year tenure on General Hospital, making him one of the most cherished figures in American daytime television. His contributions to the arts will be sorely missed, but remembered fondly by fans and fellow actors alike. Number 1. John Lawton, former lead vocalist of the renowned British band Uriah Heep, has passed away at the age of 74 from undisclosed causes on June 29, 2023. His sudden and unexpected departure leaves the rock music world mourning the loss of one of its most distinct voices. Lawton began his musical journey with bands such as The Deans, West One, and Stonewall. He soon made his mark with the German rock band Lucifer's Friend, contributing to nine studio albums. However, his most illustrious tenure was with Uriah Heep, which he joined in 1976. Taking over from original lead singer David Byron, Lawton brought a unique flair to the band, making significant contributions to albums such as Firefly, Innocent Victim, and Fallen Angel, as well as the live concert album Live in Europe, 79. Lawton's powerful vocals, especially in the AM radio single Free, cemented his reputation in the music industry. Following his time with Uriah Heep, Lawton continued to produce music with other bands, including Rebel and Gunhill, later known as the John Lawton Band. He also collaborated with Ken Hensley in the Hensley Lawton Band, and even returned to Uriah Heep in 2013, standing in for vocalist Bernie Shaw during a European tour. In addition to his extensive musical career, Lawton released several solo albums and explored other creative outlets, such as acting and directing in television. The rock music world will remember Lawton for his powerful rock vocals and passionate performances. His impact on the genre, as well as his vast body of work, constitutes a legacy that will forever be inscribed in the annals of rock history. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.